Today's episode is brought to you by Freedom Project Academy. Looking for a K-12 classical online school built on Judeo-Christian values? FPA is enrolling now for the fall. Request your free information packet at freedomforschool.com. That's freedom, F-O-R, school.com. It's time to get educated on the craziness impacting K-12 classrooms and college campuses around the world. This is The Dr. Duke Show. Hello everyone and welcome to The Dr. Duke Show. Before we get started, please hit that share button so we can educate more parents around the country. Today, we start with the word delusional. After a transgender biology teacher recently told a senior advisor at the U.S. Department of Education that students should be taught that not all egg producers are women. This from a biology teacher. And so take a look at our, our uh, candidate biologist in question. And the argument here is, is that we've got to clean up the language in the sciences. We need to become more accurate and more inclusive. Me and two other uh, trans identified uh, high school teachers put together a language guide. Our site is called genderinclusivebiology.com. And some things that we come up on a lot are for teaching about um, cell division or reproduction. A lot of textbooks, a lot of existing teaching will say, well, women produce eggs. Um, males are more likely to be colorblind. Um, the mother carries the fetus for this many months. And some ways that we can show our support for trans and non-binary students are just to clean up that language, be more precise. We can be more accurate and be more inclusive. So I would say, no, it's not women that produce eggs, it's ovaries that produce eggs. That's accurate, that's precise. We're acknowledging that not all women produce eggs and also not all egg producers are women, for example. And we're teaching students that language matters. That was Sam Long, it is the you know teacher in question, I guess. Goes by he, him, as you saw, obviously, in the pronouns. But more importantly, uh, Sam Long was speaking to three other participants, and one of them was Christian Rhodes, who's the senior advisor in the Department of Education. So if you're wondering at home, well, okay, so it's just this Sam Long talking to three other people, who cares? Except when one of the people on the call is someone in the Department of Education, a senior advisor. So it makes it, it, it important to talk about as to who has the ear of the Biden administration and how your kids' education could be affected. Let me just ask a quick question of, of Mr. Long. Is it Mr.? Sam, Sam Long. Is it like? It goes by he, him. Long Duck Dong, or am I in the wrong, the wrong movie? It's probably the wrong movie. Wrong movie, okay. That was, I guess that was uh, 16 Candles, I believe. Anyway, Mr. Long, all right. Uh, explain to me as a scientist how a creature that's not a woman has ovaries. I'll wait. Do, 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 do. Accurate, are you kidding me? Ovaries produce eggs, not necessarily women. I asked the question again, from your esteemed scientific background as a biologist, give me an example of a woman, or excuse me, as a man who actually has ovaries, and he can't do it. Well, Sam Long can't do it because Sam Long doesn't go by actual biology. So oh. Sam Long's explanation would be, Yes, that men can have babies because some men have ovaries. How does that work? If you listen to the very beginning of that clip, uh, Sam talked about the genderinclusivebiology.com website. And yes, if you parents want to see what they're trying to put into your kids' brains, you can do it because Sam Long and his co-patriots there have uh, lesson materials for your children and they have activities and videos for students and readings for students and they have a, a tab called scientific evidence which <laughs> is no science at all but about their mission i just wanted to read it so everyone can know exactly what sam's trying to do our students will face decisions about health science and medicine that we can hardly imagine how can we keep student needs and science first yet still create a safe and affirming space for intellectual curiosity this is a science teacher trying to do this. What I'd like to know is, is this, is, this is what dra drives me nuts. If we actually did have a ministry of truth, mm -hmm. they'd, be, they'd be gobsnopping this stuff all around. Yeah. But perfect. if you're thinking about the one that, that uh, Biden wants to put in place, this now is not disinformation. This is truth. It's not scientific truth. It's not logical truth. It's not experiential truth. It's not provable truth. It's not any kind of truth at all. 
but it would be considered truth to the new Biden team of informants. Meanwhile, science itself is being swept under the carpet, apparently. This is true. And according to their mission statement, they say that teaching biology creates many opportunities to authentically incorporate student curiosity. The next generation science standards. Oh, oh yes, geez. the next generation science standards. Look those up. Expect students to ask questions about natural phenomena and then explain their answers using models. This website offers examples of adapting curriculum to NGSS, which is Next Generation Science Standards, and Gender Inclusive Standards. What gender inclusive standards? As well as resources for advocating to administration and others. This is what they're taking. They're taking science, they're taking biology specifically, and they're morphing it into the Next Generation Science Standards, mm -hmm. which is their own warped scientific, air quotes, realm. And they're making it so your students, your children, are only going to get the science, again, air quotes, the science that they believe in, which has everything and only to do with gender sexuality. There's no, no, no other realm that they're, they're going to discuss when it comes to biology. Just that. That's all they want the kids to do. You even got non-biologists in the non-biologists in the Biden administration doing this as well. Just this past re weekend, Rachel Levine, you may remember, was formerly Richard Re Levine, and we remember now that she's come out and said that you know, uh, there's not a single organization anywhere in American medic medicine who disagrees in this affirming kind of uh, transgender care. And it's just not true. I mean, there, there's dozens of places, dozens of debates going on, do do dozens of different scientific opinions here. Uh, so you got Rachel Levine, who's not a scientist, warping, as Katie said, the definition of biology and the definition of science, just like Mr. Long is doing as well. These people are selling science down the road for their own selfish worldviews. And the left seems perfectly oh fine with that. With all the censorship taking place on social media platforms, we've made it easy to keep up with your favorite content. Simply download the Freedom Project media app in your app store. Get access to 18 new videos a week, plus thousands of archived shows, lecture series, and educational animations. Download the Freedom Project media app on your Apple TV, Roku, tablet, or phone, and make sure you allow for notifications to keep you informed. So we're going to do a little geography right now. Rhode Island. It is neither a road nor an island, but it is the smallest state in the union, and apparently small state equals small minds because the Democrats in the state legislature are pushing a bill. It's in the Senate. It's called Bill 2285. It's all about that pleasure-based sexual relations for your children. And the bill, if passed and becoming law, would amend current law so that the culturally appropriate courses in family life or sex education are taught to the kids beginning when they're in sixth grade, at the beginning of the school year, of course, so when your kids are still 11 years old, uh, because they really need to know about that pleasure-based sexual relations, as the bill states. Teachings would recognize pleasure-based sexual relations, different sexual orientations, and be inclusive of some safe same-sex relationships. The act would also provide that instruction include gender, gender expression, gender identity, and the harm of negative gender stereotypes. Wow. So really, it's not really just a, wow. it's really not just a pleasure bill, right? It's a, one more attempt to force a false gender narrative on kids is what it is. But the idea that somehow this is pleasure-based, right? Well, parent, the parent response is predictable. Uh, Kimberly Quagan said back in February that, quote, any child under 18, we should not be talking about sexual pleasure. We shouldn't be talking about some of these topics that they're looking at to roll into sexual education. I think it should be basically from a clinical standpoint. That's one thing I actually think and that I think anything they want to teach regarding this matter, the curriculum should be approved by parents. That's a great point. Parents should be the ones approving this and leave, sac leave pleasure out of it. I mean, come on now. Are, are we, are you, are we, why are we treating our children like animals? The one thing animals know about sex and the only thing is it's pleasurable or they wouldn't do it. That's the only reason they do it. Their instinctive bodies force them to engage in the pleasure of reproduction. That's the only reason. We are not animals. We do not need to teach children that self-gratification feels good. 
Let people f- find this through their families, through their religious traditions as they get older on their own, instead of trying to foreground um, pleasure at, before you talk about anything else, right? No morality, no more ethics, no more relationships, not about trust or communication, communication or marriage or spirituality, no. The entire level at which we're gonna talk about sex is purely as the, at the pleasure level, again, which makes us nothing more than humping dogs. That's an image I didn't don't need at all. But moving on, because we want to talk about Democrat Senator Tierra Mack. You may have remembered that name because we've talked about her before. Well, she's all up in this bill. Uh, she had to prove her leftist bona fides by supporting this bill because of her Southern abstinence-only sex education. She, she tweeted about it, not me. Uh, she's also openly lesbian. And she decided that she had to tell the local news that there was no conversation about what it meant to be gay, of what a healthy relationship looked like. Sex education is about learning about gender and gender roles, about what it's like to grow up in a single parent family. It's about all the things I wish I had gotten. It's about knowing I wasn't alone. So what, once again, narcissism. It's yes. always about me. Me, I never had this. I never was exposed to this. I never was, was given a chance to explore things that I thought I imagined that I was. And what's so interesting, because this state senator who's in support of this, again, I say to you, remember, we've talked about her before. Well, she was the one who tweeted way back in February that she was really excited for the House sex ed bill hearing, because that was back when it was in the House and now it's in the Senate, later today. Teaching comprehensive, queer, inclusive, pleasure-based sex ed was a highlight of my time teaching. Okay, so she's a former teacher who's now in the state Senate and is going to vote in favor of putting this into your children's classroom but she was doing that back when she was a teacher right. and, and the, that was the one that was our high point teaching that was kids her about high sex. point yeah. and that's what we've seen this especially in the past 10 years these activists become teachers go into the kids classroom and then they will go on to political office to make it if they can't you know it, they're only getting to see 25 kids a day what if you could go to the senate as she has tiara has and make it so it's law. So every kid in all the classrooms now have to be about this. That'll really be the highlight of her time as a senator, I yeah, bet. Yeah, and another thing that really bothers me about this is that she say the first was, woman was arguing that this, the, the Alabama uh, uh, abstinence-only sex education that I got didn't teach me to be me. Well, wait a second. Why is it that whenever we talk about alternative sexualities like homosexuality or transgender ex- uh, ideologies, how come it always includes se- sex? You, you can't be a, uh, an abstinent lesbian, you can't do that? Well, why does your lesbianism require us to teach you how to engage in lesbian sex? When we teach kids, the, 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 all these uh, abstinence le- le- laws we've had in the, in the past only talked about biology and then stay away to sex until you're in a committed relationship. Why do, why is it, what is there about homosexuality that requires us to teach you how to do it as if you wouldn't know anyway? Well, and on top of this, because this woman cannot stop herself from tweeting silly things, she uh, tweeted also during this past month that she's a single queer train, like choo-choo, train advocate who's desperate for better train service and high-speed rail options to New York City on the weekends exclusively for the queer dating scene. Better trains now. This is her priority. She wants better trains so she can get to New York City for the queer dating scene. The gay train It's ride. all, every single thing you've seen so far about her is about her. It's all it's about, about yeah. her. And, and it's being put on your children, but it's about her. Now, one more thing. Uh, the very next day then, she also tr- tweeted out that she can't wait until the internet finds out I have raised thousands of dollars for an abortion fund. So she only wants some of your kids, not all of them. She just wants the ones. And then she put this shocked ghost face hey, thing. Maybe if there were abstinence instead of pleasure-based education, you wouldn't be killing babies. Today's show is sponsored by our friends at MyPillow. Save up to 66% on all items at MyPillow.com when you use the code Dr. Duke. That's D-R-D-U-K-E. Support this show by supporting a great American company.
as we've been told many a time, everything is about democracy. This is, this is America. It's about democracy. Unless that democracy goes against your agenda. And then it's not democracy. In fact, then it's an attack on democracy or something. In Virginia, at least. Uh, the Democrats of the Senate there are very confused about democracy. But they have an agenda, so they're going to move forward with it. And it includes blocking, actually, an amendment from Governor Glenn Youngkin, which would have forced the Loudoun County, oh, Jiminy Christmas, it's Loudoun County again. Mark it down for the week. We got our Loudoun County fix in. Loudoun County School Board um, is not going to stand for re-election in the fall. Now, what had happened is Governor Glenn Youngkin said we should have an election this fall, him and his administration, because guess what? It's the congressional elections, too, and so we'd have a good turnout because people are going to be there anyway to vote for that. Now, what has been happening in the past several years for Virginia, which includes Loudoun County, Loudoun County's uh, school board elections had been on the uh, off years, so the odd years. So really, the election should be in 2023 because the last one was in 2019, but they're saying, hey, let's move it up because of the congressional elections. We'll get a better turnout. They have not gotten good turnout. Well, <laughs> that is thwarting democracy in the Democrats' minds because you know, they were elected to the four-year term, and so they should serve that four-year term. But you've been around Dr. Duke show long enough to know how messed up Loudoun County School Board is, and so now there's defense as to why they should be holding this election. Uh, first, going against those, of course, would be the Loudoun uh, Board of Supervisors member, Julie Briskman, who, who is all about having the amendment blocked because she says this is thwarting democracy. She says, excellent news. Thank you for supporting this attempt to subvert democracy. Yay, we don't actually want the, the people to vote. We just want to have it our way. You That's, I, tr I translate it for you. You know what else subverts diverse de democracy? Not telling parents that their daughters have been raped on your campuses. Mm -hmm. How about that? That, that seems to be a major subordination of the democratic process. That school board, we, we shouldn't be talking about whether or not they should be reelected. We should be talking about whether they're doing actual jail time or not, period. This is true. And basically Republican delegate Chris Head, who spoke in a floor speech, said essentially that and, and questioned exactly what how is this attacking democracy? Said members of the, on the other side, Mr. Speaker, are saying this is an attack on democracy. How is holding an election an attack on democracy? It's not like they were just trying to, you know, make a ministry of truth or anything. Mm -hmm, no. Uh, what they're doing, it said, if the people of Loudoun like this board and its actions, then I have absolutely no doubt that they will return all of them to a four-year term. This is basically calling them out at their own yep. game, like, okay. Okay, so let's just have you. Hey, if you're doing such a great job, there should be no problem. Put your name on the ballot. All of you will get voted right back in, and we'll continue moving on. But we all know the truth on that because you've been around the Dr. Duke show and have paid attention to what's been happening in Loudoun County over the past several years. Uh, Chris had also said this school board is using the powers delegated to them by this legislature and they're misusing them terribly. The fix is to allow the people of Loudoun County to express their views at the ballot box just as soon as possible. Now, Katie, did you know, though, that to the Democrat board of uh, school board members there in Loudoun to actually employ the recall process mm -hmm. would also be... An attack on de oh, yes. democracy? Yes, it's, the, not, it's, not, just, it's no. not just having an election. It, also trying to okay, take the, a different route. The democratic the path of recall. No, no. According to uh, prosecutor, far left prosecutor Buddha Biberaj and school board members, they say the recall process too would be an attack on democracy. Pryor said, quote, we do appreciate the Senate Democrats recognizing that the removal process is a proper process to make change. This cuts against the rhetoric we have heard from the school board, uh, members and particularly of the board of supervisors and Commonwealth attorney Buta by Barrage, the latter of whom has worked against citizen petitioners of Leesburg, Sterling, Algonquian, account is at every step of the way, despite an ethical duty to be fair and objective. So when you use far left prosecutors, far left war attorneys to halt the recall pop process from even getting started here in Loudoun.
Hello everyone, I'm David Fiorazzo. Before we go, let's take a little time to fill you in on a few stories we've been talking about around here. And let's start across the pond where a 49-year-old woman has finally tied the knot. Only problem, it has three legs and whiskers. Yes, that's right. Deborah Hodge has actually married her five-year-old cat. She said next to her children, her tuxedo cat is, quote, fundamentally the most important thing in her life. Let's hear from the happy newlywed, shall we? Hello, my name's Deborah Hodge, I'm 49. I've just married my cat, India. Um, I've been faced with eviction and I wanted to show that uh, I would keep her forever and let no man do us part. This is India, who I've just married. She's five years old, she's got three legs. Um, I love her. We've not got a sexual relationship, um, but I never want to be without her. We had to lose our two dogs, Siri and Starshine, and then we lost Jamal, and I can't be without her. Hodge says it all started when her landlord threatened to evict her over a no pet policy, so instead she recited vows under the universe that no man will ever separate her and India, her three-legged cat. So hard to move on from that one, but this next story is going to try. While love may be in the air for some, others are struggling to connect with their spouse, which makes more sense when you realize their spouse is a hologram. Can't make this stuff up, folks. The 30, uh, 38-year-old Aki Hiko Kondo married the love of his life four years ago. His wife is a 16-year-old computer synthesized pop singer named Miku. Kondo, who identifies as fictosexual, or someone who is sexually attracted to fictional characters, spent $17,000 on the nuptials in 2018. Thanks to the invention of Gatebox, Kondo has been able to interact with his hologram bride, but sadly, four years later, his marriage is on the skids as support for the Gatebox software has ended, meaning Kondo can no longer speak with his fictional Hom hologram wife. Are you keeping up? Duke and Katie, it seems like only a, a matter of time and tech support can save this marriage. What do you think? I'd say they need <laughs> to go to counseling, but there's, I don't, there's, they, there'd be an error code, I guess, 404 <laughs> error code. I, when we first saw this story about four years ago, I was like, <laughs> I, whew. and then now that it's back as a story four years later and that this entire time this victor victo sexual is that what he said victo victo sexual that it's an actual thing that he's still keeping up with this it, oh I, I just want to know that woman with the cat did she actually saw its leg off to keep it from running away because any cat <laughs> with that kind of an owner was just like she must have done, done, done something really sinister to keep that cat safe oh lord help us Human beings. Hey, uh, let's wrap things up, though. This is a great story. Some real humans. Uh, the heroic efforts of one father saved the day in front of thousands of baseball fans. Maybe you saw this story. Jacob Kingsley was simply bottle feeding his infant son at a Cincinnati Reds game when a fly ball turned the young dad into an internet hero. Let's watch. Bicep soreness. Pops it up. Nice job. Wow, feeding the baby. Wow. Holds the bottle, no spillage, baby in perfect bliss, and a souvenir. Nice. Nice. <laughs> Pretty amazing. Jacob said this was his son's first baseball game and certainly made for a great video to show his son when he gets older. But the viral moment of the heroic dad has been viewed 1.5 million times and will be featured on sports highlight reels probably for years to come. Katie, you're the avid baseball fan in the house, so can you see maybe you or your husband doing something like this to get some attention? Well, to, not to get some attention. I mean, I would, I would definitely be the one, but I would have my mitt ready to go. And I could see why the dad was definitely feeding his son because the way Cincinnati Reds are playing so far this year, there's not much else you can do. And that's probably the best highlight so far of the entire Cincinnati Reds season. <laughs>
Hey, whatever it takes to make baseball watchable is fine with me. Yes. All right. Well, that wraps it up for this segment. More to come next time for sure. All right. Now, before we say a goodbye, I want to take a moment to show some love to our Patriot Club members. And today, that special shout out goes to Gary from Yakima, Washington. Gary, thank you for supporting us. And that wraps up the show for all of us at Freedom Project. We want you to stay educated, my friends. 